I want that. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me again. And I have a lot to talk about. Look at that. All that to talk about. So let's get started. This week in work, I posted three videos, maybe four videos since my last vlog. And uh, the pumpkin, the pumpkin uh, smasher, which was entered into Rory Mays, or AKA the Dirty Smith's zombie weapons challenge. This is his fourth year in a row doing the zombie weapons challenge. I've been wanting to get involved and I finally did it and I'm happy I did. I came up with this uh, crazy mechanism that opened. I thought I was gonna be able to stick it in a pumpkin and open it and the pumpkin would explode, but this is in Hollywood and it didn't work very well. I liked the mechanism. It was great and fun to figure out how to make it. So I'm really proud of my accomplishment. Totally useless and uh, it's funny to read the comments people rationalizing why it's not going to be good in a zombie apocalypse I, I'd like to take one of those trolls and hit him in the face with this and then let me know if they think it didn't work Another video I released this week is my CNC horses. I've had a couple of ideas to do CNC horses for a while now, and as I began to lay it out, I realized it's gonna take up a lot of real estate on a sheet of plywood. I probably get three or four sets of horses out of two, maybe three sheets of plywood, and I realized I had to scale this back or figure out a way to maximize my layout, and that's when I came up with the idea of puzzling these pieces together. I had just come from the Vectric user group, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute, and in the Vectric user group, me and a couple guys were talking about making puzzles and their experiences with making puzzles that don't come apart and right there and then is when I came up with the solution for this I was as I was into it I remembered Izzy had posted something uh, about using this similar puzzle joint uh, similar to the way I used it and uh, so I got to give Izzy some subliminal credit there and uh, also the guys at the Vectric user group. So this is a fun one. The vector for this is actually on the posting, on the original video post. There is a voiced over video on my Patreon for this and uh, the flip table and the pumpkin smasher. So if you're at all interested, go check those out. Another video I posted this week was the flip table. It's the triple flip table. The guys at Linking Craig specifically asked me if I would come up with a cool flip table. It seemed to be a trending thing on YouTube. And uh, most recently, the Pneumatic Attic posted a table that had two flip sections that were kind of oblong, the opposite ends of a longer table. And I looked at that and I thought, if that was in my shop, I would want it to be along the, the long side so that it could be against the wall. And that was where I came up with this solution. And uh, Three is always better than two. So I said, if I'm gonna make a long table, I could break it up into equal thirds. Came out really good, everybody really wants it. I'm gonna try and put some effort into licensing this design. I don't know if it's at all possible, uh, but at the very least, I'd like to see if anybody out there would like to take a crack at making their own version of this, or if you're getting inspired to do something a little different, I'd love to see it. These pull pins are from McMaster Car. I posted a picture without any locking mechanism, and Andrew over at Blacksmith Tools on Instagram sent me a page from McMaster Car, which showed a bunch of selections, and I immediately knew why he sent me that. It was great communication. He, all he did was send me a screen grab, and I knew exactly why he was sending that to me and what it was. It was a little bit of a puzzle for about 10 seconds. But Andrew, thank you. You enlightened me again. On a blacksmith project ongoing, I'm working on a chisel. I'm gonna transform a cement concrete stone chisel into a woodworking chisel. So this is just like a big giant plug of steel basically. And I'm um, reshaping it, forming it, and turning it into a wood chisel. I'm gonna try and incorporate a little bit of surface grinding, a little machining, a little bit of uh, everything that I'm learning into this. And uh, I have to make a socket at the end, so I have to flare out all this metal and turn it into a, a, a conical socket for a wooden handle. So this is gonna be a good one. I'm working on that, taking it a little bit at a time in the blacksmith shop. And uh, again, just pick a project if you wanna learn how to do something and then you'll learn more than you even set out to learn. And my canoe is done. It is done. I can say that it is done. I started it in May, May 20 something, and it is done. Now, however many months later that is, I don't know, do the math. I'm very happy and proud of my accomplishment. Uh, can't wait to start the next one so I can improve on all the mistakes that I made on this one. And I mean that. I kind of joke about it, but it is true. I can't wait to start another one so that I could 
do a better job than I did on this one. I'm very proud of my accomplishment here. This is going to live at the Filson Store in New York. The opening event takes place November 17th and 18th. I will be there in New York City, Union Square. Look at the Filson website. You can see more information about that event. So I will be hanging around the store all weekend. So if you want to come and hang out with me, see the canoe in person, see some paddles. Also been working on that feather paddle, which I'll be there at the store with. So keep an eye out for that stuff. I've been contracted by Lowe's to make three tip videos. So I'm carrying on my tip series. Uh, the last one I made was number 11, uh, about a year and a half ago. And so I've just in the can today got miter saw tips. Spike's up for the challenge, but cranky. He doesn't really like being in the shop anymore. He likes laying around the kitchen. Look for that new tips video. Uh, everything has to be approved. Uh, the no. tips video for the miter no. saw is in the can, edited and ready to go if they approve it. I'll probably post it soon, but I'm going to do a tips video on a oscillating tool, the one that cuts like this, and then also a roto zip. So I'm going to do two more tips videos probably this week. So I don't know when they'll post, but they have to be done this week, at least for review. <laughs> I've been making this ice pick for four or five years now, four years I guess, three or four years, I don't know. And by popular demand, everybody's been asking me for a mini. So I'm working on mini ice picks, I'm gonna have at least a couple of hundred for Christmas, well in process. I'm really happy with them, I've been carrying this around, a couple of friends are beta testing them for me, they seem to really like it. Everything's the same, just scale down a little bit. The, uh, the diameter is the same, so it's the same stock, same pick just shorter and the ring is a little smaller. So these are well underway. Look out for them in the store coming out very soon. Some updates on the building. We got the wire pulled from the street to the building. I'm actually installing three phase wire. So a lot of wire went in the ground and came up the other side, 320 feet away. Thank you to Patrick and the guys at South Wire who came and did this wire pull and everything was documented. So please take a look at a two minute documentary right here about that process. Thank you, South Wire. still need to have the panels inspected so the electric is not connected yet it's not connected to the street once the building boxes get inspected then the street will be connected and again I'll have three phase in that building which is very exciting but the insulation is going in and uh, me and Brett put up some pieces Brett and Jesse put up some pieces me and Owen put up some pieces so we're taking stabs at it 
and it's a big group effort. So everybody that's helped me put up the insulation till now, I really appreciate it. And we're in no rush. I mean, we're not protecting water or anything. Just doing it as we can. I'm not going to kill myself. I'm very happy about the progress of the building till now. And I have places to work. So it's going to get done when it gets done. On November 17th, in partnership with VisitLindale.com and CRC Industrial, I'd like to invite you guys out to an incredible event here at the Old Mill Pond in Lindale, Texas. The museum showcases the Industrial Revolution with an astonishing array of historical memorabilia. A perfect backdrop to celebrate old skills brought back to life. Twelve acres of history packed with PhDs and masters of their craft assembled for you. Seriously, be prepared to see more than you expect. Pond maintenance, looming, pottery, tree grafting, blacksmithing, welding, solar, natural soaps and candle making, animal husbandry, off-grid living, homesteading, tiny house construction and lifestyle, metal casting, tool restoration, firewood processing, hit and miss motor demonstrations, and machining, and so, so much more. A big shout out to my buddy Justin at The Good of the Land. Check out his channel. He's having an event in Lindale, Texas. It takes place the same weekend. I'm going to be in New York. I was scheduled to go to this event, but then the canoe event was moved to the same weekend. And of course, I was obligated, being the guy who had the canoe, I have to go to the canoe event. I will not be there at Lindale, Texas, but take a look. A lot of other big YouTubers will be there and I will link the video below which promotes the event which takes place November 17th. If you like my channel, you like a lot of this stuff that's going to be there. So if you're in the south, if you're in Texas, go check it out November 17th. This is my submission for the zombie challenge. I uh a failed Wu Tang pizza cutter. I, uh, <laughs> That's I, your I, first I, try. <laughs> in this little factory, in other factories like it that were spread up and down this valley, developed the new technologies no that were capable of not just making guns, but were weirdo. capable of making sewing machines and typewriters and bicycles and automobiles. You just go down the line about the types of technologies that this gun making technology was used for. About a week ago, me and a couple of friends, some YouTubers, some good friends, some non-YouTubers, some Instagrammers, up here in the Northeast, New England, got together at the American Precision Museum in Windsor, Vermont. This place is really cool. It's the cradle or the birthplace of precision interchangeable parts, specifically rifles. Rifles and interchangeable parts were made here for the very first time in the world. And some of these machines survive and they're on display. And there's great miniatures here too as well. Miniature steam engines, miniature machine shops. Uh, whoever makes these little mini dioramas, it's incredible. I've seen a very similar mini diorama at the Baltimore Museum of Industry. So it seems like a, a company that makes these little dioramas, but they are insane to look at as are the big legitimate machines some of them dating back to the 1750s so if you're ever over there go check out the museum of precision in windsor vermont windsor vermont i think it's in windsor vermont i'll put a link below you can check it out but i had a great time with the boys guys it was a great idea and i think we should do that much more often just get a group of us together up here in the northeast and hang out a couple fans showed up and then we went mantiquing we had a really good day guys thank you You guys know Jesse over at the Samurai Carpenter? If you don't, you should check him out. He's a very passionate woodworker, comes through in everything he does. He's got a good sense of humor. Jesse's putting up a school called the Maker's Mob. And if you go in there right now, you can go and get plans from Jesse and lessons and private hangouts. He's giving my audience an exclusive 50% off if you go join through the link below. And Jesse's an extremely talented guy. Everything he does is perfect. And I watch him, I've been inspired by him since he first started on YouTube. His precision for woodworking, his passion, it comes through in all of his projects. So go check him out. Check out the link below. Go to the website. It'll explain everything. And that website, I think, is going to grow a little bit. And we've been talking about doing some partnerships on, potentially doing some partnerships on that website. So as that develops, I'll let you guys know more about it. But go check out Jesse. If the very least, check out his YouTube channel. He's a good dude.
I always talk about my buddy Lou over at Tips for a Ship, right? Go check out his channel. I'm giving him a plug here one more time. He makes wooden boats, but if you make anything, go check him out because his knowledge, his tips, his, his skill comes through in everything he says and does. Even if you don't make boats, you will absolutely learn something that you can apply to something in your regular day-to-day -day routine, whatever it is. So go check out Tips from a Shipwright. He just finished his second series on building this beautiful sports dory, this beautiful boat, and at the end he rows it. So I'm inspired. I'm going to have to shoot that similar scene very soon for my canoe. So go check out Lou. Tell him I sent you. Big shout out to the guys over at Woodpecker Tools. Guys, thank you very much for this incredible box of goodies. I'm really excited to start using straight lines and precision measurements and being able to measure everything accurately from the edge. So guys, thank you very much. I really appreciate this. It's going to go straight in my toolbox. It's going to be an arm's length away. I'm very proud to use my Woodpecker tools. Guys, thank you very much. A couple weeks ago I was in Chicago. I had a very quick trip. I came in just before Saturday evening and I left early Sunday morning. But on that Saturday I spoke at the Vectric user group meeting. It took place at a hotel in Chicago and it was great. It was really great for me. It was a, a series of 30 minute lessons on how to use Vectric Expire or Vectric VCore Pro. And if you don't know anything about Vectric, it is the software used primarily uh, in my world, it, it, through the ShopBot programming uh, to run a ShopBot CNC. And it is the uh, art software. So I import vectors and then using Vectric software, I decide how I'm going to cut those vectors on, in, outside, 3D cuts. So uh, Vectric, thank you very much for having me there. I had a great talk and uh, the guys were were great. I learned so much just from hanging out with you guys. So it was uh, it was really really great. You inspired those sawhorses that I made a couple days after I left you guys. So thank you very much. Bobby Duke is nuts in a good way. If you don't watch Bobby Duke, go check him out. We became friends this year, and uh, I'm happy to call him a friend. He's a good dude, and he's an incredible artist. And he stole my ice pick at New York Maker Faire and he turned it into this incredibly beautiful knife. And I make a cameo in the video. And it's silly, funny, and it's hilarious. Go check out Bobby's new video where he makes this beautiful knife from one of my ice picks. Thank you, Bobby. I want that. <laughs> doctor! Doctor! I've got something in my eye! An eyeball! Gurgling guts! Spare part surgery! My brain hurts too! A lot of you guys might not know this about me, but I spent 15 years designing and developing toys, and one of the toys I developed was this thing called Gurgling Guts. I invented it, me and my buddy Perry designed and styled it, my brother Joey marketed it, and we sold it to these guys here called Four Kids, and they've had the the licensing rights to this product for a long time and it sat dormant for a little while. We basically started selling it in 1994. They're bringing it back through Kickstarter and if they raise enough money they're going to start making all the tooling again and they're going to try and relaunch it as a, as a product, a novelty product. So go check out my guys that are selling Gurgling Guts. It's an original Duresta product from the 90s and we're going to relaunch it through four kids. Go check out the Kickstarter link below. And if you want to support it, there's a couple of stages you can go and get some special products. So, guys at Four Kids, thank you, Kenny and Jeff. And uh, good luck. Thank you, Dustin. Love it. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate that very much.
Thank you. Thank you. Always, Greg. Thank you, brother. Ian, thank you very much. I appreciate everything you've done till now. Don't feel bad. Thank you very, very much. I want to shout out to my buddies Cliff and John. They made this beautiful swage block. And I got a chance to hang out with them at their shop in New Jersey. And uh, Cliff's going to come and hang out with us at our blacksmith class this week. So I'm looking forward to learning a few things from him. So guys, thank you for this beautiful swage block. If you want, check their links below. These are for sale. They're making them custom right now. Special design by them. If you want one, follow through on some of the links below and get in touch with them. Tell them I sent you. In the last month, I got a chance to meet with the guys at ABB Robots. They make these giant robot arms that swing around and weld and move things in factories where you see cars being made and packages being moved around. And they invited me to come look at the development lab in Connecticut. And guys, I was so happy. I was like a little kid in a candy store. I can't show a lot of what they showed me because a lot of it is secret development. But I did get a chance to play with and program four lines of code on my very first robot arm and uh, we're talking about doing a project together I don't know uh, if I could say it right now but we're gonna experiment and I might take possession of one of these robot arms to do some kind of cool fun stuff with and uh, it's great to see the inside of a very high-tech development shop and see the guys are just regular guys just want to have fun with cool things so thank you to you guys who I met with and I'm looking forward to hanging out with you guys again Thank you to everybody that sends me cool stuff. I can't thank you enough. It is just so heartwarming when I get beautiful notes and letters from you guys. So thank you all very, very much. I really owe all my success to my audience. And I just, I can't say thank you enough times. And uh, I just appreciate it. I really do. Thank you. Until the next vlog, thank you all very much for joining me and supporting me here either at my vlogs or at my build videos or both. I'm happy to have two different TV shows on the same channel. This and my build videos uh, gives me a chance to chat a little bit and share my life with you and thank you for playing along with me. I appreciate it very much. See you guys next time.